you know, small businesses are not exempt from the legal side of running a business, but so often it's a part of business that we don't think about whether we intentionally ignore it because it feels scary or whether we're just not aware. Legal is so empowering because you can make all the choices and you can set it up for success and for a way that feels good for everybody, that positions you as the expert. Mm -hmm. And even with like trademarks and things as well. When, when do I get one? Should, do I need one? Do I not need one? But even having one shows that you're not someone who's just dreamt of an idea overnight. And that, that's one thing for us that I'm constantly like, how can we make this more fun? Like, how can we get people behind this? What can we do? Because people typically think of like legal as a boring thing. Can people say no refunds allowed? That's my big question. But one thing you can't do is say no refunds. Let me to give you an example. Welcome to the podcast. You're listening to Starting the Conversation. I'm your host, Alice Benham. And this week, I am so excited and honored to be joined by the brilliant Lucy Wheeler from Lucy legal which I have to say is one of the smartest business names I've ever heard she's a lawyer she runs a business all about protecting your business legally Lucy welcome to the podcast hello thank you so much for having me uh, it's really exciting to be here I was saying it feels weird that we're not sat here in sequence I mean yeah I mean I could have done that we should have done it <laughs> context for people you were the fantastic headline and, and main sponsor behind small business last year so we spent a whole week hanging out decked in sequins celebrating everyone at Christmas time it feels almost wrong that we're hanging out in July but there you go definitely I feel like we should have uh, worn sequins just because uh, but yeah it's nice to see you not as well I was gonna say we should have had champagne as well we should have done that yeah we didn't really celebrate it did we <laughs> that's a whole thing to talk about isn't it as yeah. business owners we just do these massive things and then we're like okay I think that's one of the things that I've noticed on my journey definitely that you can you do something you're working on it so hard and then you just get okay on to the next one and mm. you don't properly celebrate things yeah you're trying to make a, more of a point to do that. I think that's one of my focuses for this year. Because if you don't, no one else does, do they? Not Everyone else And that's part of the journey, I think, as well. Like, I think people want to see that part, don't they? They want to mm. see... Because I think one of the things that makes like running a business so exciting and doing things yourself is you can take people on this incredible journey with you and you t tell them this is coming this we're going to do this and then you kind of leave them at that last moment you miss that last episode where you're like well, what about the celebrations and I don't think we're the only ones that will be guilty of not properly celebrating. I remember my therapist once pointed it out to me that we often don't celebrate the win because we've been so involved in making it happen that it doesn't always feel like a win mm -hmm. when you get to it. I remember saying to my therapist years ago I was like oh I've just achieved this big thing but I don't know why I don't feel excited and she said, well, you probably aren't going to feel that, you know, euphoric because you planned for it to happen. You put in the work for it to happen. You knew it was going to happen. So actually you have to make an intentional choice to have that celebration because it doesn't always happen naturally. I think that's something that maybe I'm going to say, I'm going to push it onto you to do because that's like your area of expertise of like planning in when you do a launch, when you're saying to people, here's how you mm. market something. Here's how you do this. Maybe we need to encourage people to have that like last bit and say, and what about that plan afterwards of like when you're going to celebrate yeah. instead of just... Because we do like, or we definitely do in my business, like dissect everything afterwards. We pull it apart. We're like, what can we have done better? What can we, what can we do better next time? Like, what do we do really well? And we do pull all that apart. But yeah, definitely mm. don't do as much celebrating as we should. Yeah, totally agree. Love the tangent we've already <laughs> yeah, begun with. That is a great sign of what's to come. Speaking of business journeys, I want to start with just a bit of context on what you do. Mm -hmm. and how you got to kind of what you do. I said in my own words in the intro that you help people protect their businesses legally. Yeah. That's not inaccurate, is it? That is that's correct. That is what you do. You know, and sometimes I'm like, I'm sure that's not the like fancy website copy version, but that is my understanding of it. Do you know what? I'm really pleased that you actually did the intro because I think it's really hard sometimes to encapsulate what you do. And I think sometimes we spend so long, don't we, trying to work out like, what's that little bit of marketing mm. that I can say? And like, what's that thing? And even like, five years into the journey now, I still struggle with that unless I say I own a legal template shop, which just doesn't justify what we do yeah. at all. It is nice to have you to say it, so ah, that's good. I'm glad. Well, running a business, you know, is surrounded by the law, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not, yeah. whether we know it or not. Yeah. And so what you do is incredibly needed. I'm curious, because I don't even know this, did you begin your journey as a lawyer in the kind of business and, and then small business space or, you know, I guess if you were to look back to maybe when you graduated law school, would you be surprised to see that what you're doing now is kind of helping small businesses legally? Oh, yeah, definitely. I wanted to be a criminal barrister. That's what I wanted to be. Really? And that's what I spent my summers at university doing. I was uh, went to uni in London and I thought that's what I was going to do. And I wanted to be a barrister. And that's how I trained when I first started. I trained as a barrister. 
just really like I guess things happened don't they? and they just changed all of the funding around what you could do and what you'd get paid and although I'd spent summers like literally every week at a different place going to all the different courts and all of these incredible trials and things that was not the work I would be doing I would be going to like far-flung courts like up at the top of the country one day like the bottom of the next day doing like just mentions and just pleas and like just tiny little things not like on a huge murder trial or anything like that as you start mm. out and I was just like I don't know if I want to do that and if it's going to be worth it and I started in the firm working for the NHS actually and doing a lot of that kind of work for healthcare just whilst I decided what I was going to do and then sort of stayed there for a bit and then they were like would you like a job I was like no I'm going to be a barrister I'm going to be a barrister <laughs> and then I just ended up not being a barrister in the end um and got because I kind of got involved in it and then they were like why don't you have this training contract so I did that uh, moved to London because I was in for Newcastle at the time moved to London to take that role and then yeah things just kind of snowballed so I didn't ever I didn't even think I was going to ever have my own business like I didn't think that would be possible and it kind of I don't want to say happened by accident because I was very intentional and in a lot of awkward conversations at the part where I was about to, to start my own business but I never thought I would be able to do it it's so interesting isn't it mm. how we do things now that we absolutely love and I don't know about you, I couldn't design a job I think that would be better suited for me and what I like doing and how I work best than my business. Yet I never sat down and thought, oh, this is going to be the best plan. I honestly count my lucky stars every day that I've somehow through a combination of, you know, luck, privilege, timing, hard work, all the things landed on this. And it's yeah. amazing to hear how that's And I think that's you. what's so exciting as well, like not just about business, but about life in a way that you can, that, that we just don't know even what's going to happen and that you can intentionally put yourself in the right spaces talk to people get in the right rooms but also then you can it is by putting in the work and doing it like taking chances and taking risks because it's it's mm. risky to start your own business yeah and I think like when I got to that point I was thinking what if I fail what if I what's everyone going to think of me and I even read an article at that time and it was written by some lawyers and it was say because there was a, sh a bit of a shift in the market and they changed some regulations of what you could do outside of a law firm one of the reasons I thought I couldn't do it because it's, it's so heavily regulated and it the articles are written by two men and they were saying well just make sure that you're really clear what you're going to do when you come back to the profession when your business hasn't worked and I just often when things get hard I Re, like go back over that in my mind I'm like yeah. I'm I don't even know who they are like but I keep remembering what they're saying I was like I can't believe they said that and they just almost presumed that you'd fail and it's so it's really hard to run a business like mm. for anyone who's listening thinking this is a bit tough right now we're going through through a difficult phase it's really hard and I don't think people share it enough online how how hard it is like not many people run their own business mm. and then actually still getting up every day even though all the going through all the difficult things yeah it's really it's really tricky isn't it mm. I think you've really got to love something about it whether it's the work you're doing or the journey or how it feels to kind of stick through that but I mean amazing that running a business has kind of led you to what you do now because what you do is so needed you know actually was a, a thought I had when you first messaged me last November it must have been about getting involved in small business which thank you again for would not have happened without you or at least would have happened but uh would have completely wrecked me so thank you for your support with that you know when you got in touch I remember having this moment of like ah legal help for small businesses like in my head when you hear lawyer for business you think big business yeah. you know all the big businesses out there have a law firm that they work with some even have a whole department of like in-house lawyers yeah. and actually the more that I've you know, gotten to know you and your content and bought from your shop and used what you do. I'm like, gosh, this is essential. You know, small businesses are not exempt from the legal side of no. running a business, but so often it's a part of business that we don't think about whether we intentionally ignore it because it feels scary or whether we're just not aware. Where for you does kind of that passion come from? You know, when I'm sure you could potentially be making more money or have it easier, maybe working with big businesses. Uh, kind of what's your take on, yeah, making sure that small businesses are still served legally? Is that something you notice that it often gets yeah, overlooked? Yeah, it gets overlooked all the time. And I think there's an, sometimes people genuinely do not know that they have to do it. And I, that that makes me be like, I need to do more. Like I need to get more visible and do more things. Because I'm like, how can you not know that you would need terms? Like, how is it? not possible but they just genuinely don't know or they mm. don't know that you can't copy someone you can't use their work and I think for me it comes back from the idea of 
be, people being able to create this incredible life like you just said you couldn't design a better life and that's now the life that we have me and my family have designed this incredible life through the businesses that we have because we've got two and it's amazing and I want that for other people too and it's that freedom and that flexibility and that creating like doing everything that you want to do or not do you know like if you don't want want to go like chasing after other people's dreams I mean there's a lot that people say in the online space about like 10k months and six figure years and <laughs> all of those things and I've got really strong opinions on why that's not helpful uh-huh. and I think that what people actually genuinely want is to spend time with their friends like when it's sunny outside they want to be able to go to the pub like and get a drink or they want to go for a walk and enjoy their life spend more time with their family and that for me is the driver to to do that to give them the freedom to be able to do it and legal empowers everything that you do within your business like the fact that you can close your laptop and not think oh but what if like someone that's just recently bought for me this week has like has a question for example because Legal is boundaries. Like when you're saying to someone like, this is the course I'm going to have or this is the membership I'm going to offer, what you're doing within those terms is you're saying, I'm going to be available to you between nine and five or whatever you're going to do. So you can confidently close your laptop at five o'clock and think, if they email me at half past five, I don't have to respond to them because I never said I would. It's about having those boundaries in place. Also, if someone asks you for a refund at half past five on a Friday night, which happens, or sends a cease and desist at that time, which happens, you know how to handle it you don't panic and you don't think oh it's going to ruin my whole weekend because you've got the tools in place and so that's like my passion comes from being able to help other people Mm. to put everything in place that they need so that they can create these incredible lives and the freedom and the flexibility Mm. so that they can do what they want and not worry about the behind the scenes stuff as you say because most people would have to have a whole department to cover those things but nobody when they're starting out has a budget for things yeah. like that and we all know don't we we have to wear so many hats as a business owner and some of those hats you can muddle through yourself and DIY and learn as you go I don't know about anyone listening but the legal side would not be one of those hats that I feel confident kind of making up and I I feel like at least I can speak from my own personal experience here and actually I've heard this from a lot of clients in different ways as well knowing that legal is so important can actually sometimes make us act in the opposite way where we go it's so important I see it also actually with people's finances I don't know if you notice Mm, often those those two categories kind of get treated in the same way where we feel overwhelmed we know it's so key so we bury our heads in the sand and we think that's more comfortable that's more safe Whereas actually, from what you've pointed out there, it's by doing these things, having those things in place that you feel more safe. And I guess truly safe, not, you know, ignorance is bliss safe, but genuine, like you said, knowing you're protected, knowing that you and your business are secure. Do you often see people go on that journey from like, oh my God, I feel scared because I realize I've got nothing to, oh my gosh, it feels so good. Yeah, and honestly, there's a whole range of this so there'll be people listening who are just thinking yeah that's me exactly what you just described like I'm just I'm putting it off but then there's people who are winging it and they know and that maybe their business is growing faster than they ever imagined and they Mm. keep thinking I must do that but I just don't have time and they're not not necessarily purposefully putting it off yes but they are people are genuinely worried about getting it wrong worried it's going to be really expensive worried about like yeah not doing it properly or thoroughly and it's I think that a lot of the, the time people do have this like fear around it as you say they put it off they, they, I often say try and connect it to your finances because when you're looking at your money try and look at the legal side too and hopefully if you've put things in place at the start it might be a case of yep nothing to do like when you're looking every quarter at your numbers you might be like yeah there's no legal things to do but it might be as exciting as I'm going to be launching this new thing mm-hmm. so I need to be thinking about trademarks in advance to get that in place um, but yeah there's definitely people who come to us and they they say after working with us or even just from buying a template from the legal shop they, they just literally say wow I have been putting this off for so long and yeah. it was so much simpler than I thought it was going to be mm. it didn't cost me anywhere near what I thought it would and I now feel so much better because I think it, you can really limit yourself as well because you're worrying uh, what if something does go wrong because what if someone does ask for a refund and you mm. don't know what you're doing you don't want to put you don't want to be charging too much because it makes such a big difference and what if, if you're charging more do then is that the point when you have a contract or can you get away with not having a contract if you're not charging more than like 100 pounds like people have so many interesting questions around things like that like when should you get things in place and sometimes there isn't really an exactly a right or wrong answer like it's not like oh on day 17 of your business you must have got this in place and uh-huh. file for this and I think that's what makes legal harder because you know like with accounts and things like when you hit this part in your journey you have to pay VAT or mm. 
mm. at this point you have to file your accounts on this date and there are, there are dates so people yeah. are like okay yeah I need I know I need to do this by then and they kind of make themselves do it whereas it's not for every element of the legal side there's no set date of like you must do this on this date that's so true and then anxiety wreaks havoc with a lack of clarity doesn't it if mm-hmm. it feels like I can't understand this thing there's no like tip box tick boxes for me that's when the default can be to kind of ignore it but like you said it's one of those things where once you've got it solved from what I've experienced you almost don't know how much it was bothering you until you fix it I had that recently I sorted out just one thing that needed tweaking in my contracts and immediately I felt so much calmer about speaking to new clients and onboarding them and doing inquiry calls and I was like gosh I didn't even realize how much that was kind of causing me like low level anxiety really until I had it fixed and I guess as well a lot of the time the legal side can be something that people don't work on whether as you said that's because they feel overwhelmed by it so they choose not to or just because whether you don't know is what you need to do you're not being intentionally ignorant you're just not knowing it needs to be done I think it can be sadly one of those things where you almost don't realize what you're missing until something goes wrong and then that's always when I'll see my clients will get get whatsapp out the blue being like do you know anywhere that I can buy template contract and I'll always send them to your shop because it's just so nice having somewhere where I'm like I trust this I know this go there and then I'll always follow up with like what's happened and that's the thing and sometimes people put it in in place afterwards and that's again it's not necessarily wrong for some things you do need it in place first but I think what you're saying there hopefully will empower a lot of people in the sense that you've been in your business journey for a long time Mm. and you're still tweaking and making amendments completely and you're allowed to do that in legal do you know like that's the thing it's not a case of right you have to buy everything for your legal you have to like and obviously you can go and instruct solicitors get them to support you don't have to do all of that and then that's it and you never do it again Mm. it's a case of getting something in place and then making sure that works for you in your business and then tweaking it and changing it and maybe you'll change the way you deliver your services or as you just said reflecting on this and thinking this is not working properly and it's not that you were wrong before but just maybe there's a better way to do it and we do that with everything else like nobody has the same graphics that they started off or the same branding like everybody like builds on what they're doing in business Mm. and also we all try and DIY bits as well like us as we go along don't we we do as you said we wear a lot of hats in business and we do as much as we can ourselves and I think it's important to try and look at a contract yourself and try and write it and realize wow it's actually going to take me hours and hours to do it Mm. and even when I've done it I think that's one of the big things is when people finished it they're like I don't actually think I've even done it right and what if I've missed loads of things out and I think that makes people nervous but just a case of actually sitting down and and putting those ideas together because sometimes Mm. the process of thinking about contingencies that would go into your contract of like well what if what if someone's sick or what if I'm sick or what if they don't attend on time and how long am I actually gonna be in this session before I cancel it and say it's a missed session and it's just thinking of those kind of things and people are like that's really obvious that should have clearly gone in there but you don't think about it necessarily and and until you get to the point where someone's always late for a session as you say this bit isn't working and then you're like Mm. okay I need to make need to put this into my terms yeah completely agree and I think let's talk about contracts if we're there that from my side as someone who's you know in no way a lawyer is actually one of the really exciting things about the legal side of things because it's not just about being like legally legally quote unquote you know the things you'd think of I don't know I remember when I first made a contract I thought right what goes in a contract and I remember I wrote it myself just like you said and Mm. then I actually ended up paying a lawyer to check it and in hindsight I was like I should have just paid someone to like give me a template or make it so can say from personal experience trying to do it yourself usually is your just to uh do it from a template or with someone else but I remember when I first made that I was like right what goes in a contract it's financial stuff and data stuff that's what that's legal right money and data and now if you look at my contract that's maybe 10% of it and the 90% of it that's more about my terms of working what people can expect of me what I expect of them how I deliver what does fit within my job role what does like that to me is actually really exciting that you can use a contract to not just protect you and them but also actually to set something out that makes the way that you work really clear and therefore really impactful but many many people myself included I'm sure at points who operate without a contract Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you hear this all the time Lucy Mm -hmm. it's well nothing's gone wrong yet my clients are my friends I try everyone trusts me I trust them to you and I'm assuming I might know the answer to this but is a contract a non-negotiable when you're kind of working with clients what's your take on people that kind of go like well it's, it's all right so far I trust everyone it's okay that is something that it's a position that a lot of people take and it's 
kind of similar to when people say, I'm going to go on holiday without any travel insurance. Sure, go on holiday without any travel insurance. But when you are skiing down a mountain and then you crash and you tear um, a cruciate ligament, which has happened to me twice. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, that really felt like it was from personal experience. Yeah, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, thank I, I'm so pleased that I've got uh, insurance in Canada where like you just like go into the hospital, they charge you some money. And it's a similar type of thing of like, mm-hmm. you can get away with it for so long. I mean, certain things like you have to have a refund policy. If you don't tell consumers about their right to a refund, they can ask you up to a year and a day later for a refund. So you're just holding yourself out to getting asked for refunds or if you've not protected your brand properly with a trademark you might get a cease and desist and I just kind of think why would you work all the hours that you do to not put in place these really simple things because getting a trademark can cost you as little as 170 pounds and I think sometimes people are are like 170 not 1170 like that's not very much but imagine if you had to rebrand your whole business that's going to cost you so much time and effort and energy and of course I'm going to say to people get a contract in place but I think it's part of it is that bit that actually really excites me when you were saying about it it can be really impactful it's actually empowering for you as a business owner but also for other people when they think about it from the other side of like when you give someone a contract or you give them some clear terms how like incredible they'll feel do you know like because they feel looked after like it's part of your brand having terms and conditions written in a way that people can understand or you can make you can make them fun like you can make them like how you can put a tone of voice to them and make them like interesting like we our house style for example it does not use big words like we like on purpose because of like my background and like friendly northerner all of those kind of things I don't try and make it so people can't understand like you don't want that when you give a contract Mm. to someone you want your clients to be able to say oh great yeah I understand everything but you also want them to be excited about working with you and as you said you set out what you expect of them but also what you're they want to know what you're signing up to too because one of the common questions I get asked is do people need to sign it like can I just like have terms is it terms or like what what's the difference between terms and conditions and like what's and a contract and is a contract and an agreement the same thing they are they're just different words but like terms would generally not be signed and a contract or an agreement would be signed and people are like well if I'm selling something online do I have to get like signature software it's almost like I say to them how would it feel to you if you were spending ten thousand pounds on something and you didn't have that other person's signature to say they're gonna show up and they're gonna do the things and whilst you don't necessarily need to have someone's signature you can do it with a checkbox like I accept terms conditions that kind of thing it's just that feeling do you know like it's like the way that they're going to present and like if someone if you were signing up for something and you they didn't have any terms how would you feel and it's like even if you're buying something online you kind of might want to check or oh, can I send this back if I don't like it if it, if it doesn't fit yes. do you know like it's it's that kind of feeling and we've got to treat our business like that like what if I've I've created something or like as you touched on a moment ago what if they don't get the result what if because that's a big thing that people worry about especially in the online space they're Mm. like am i investing in this person but how do you know if they're any good are they are you going to be able to will you be able to get a refund will you not be able to get a refund Mm. i think that's you've got to think about it from the consumer's point of view and actually having really good terms and conditions that people understand really clear as to what would happen if they had a problem how disputes might be resolved that that will give you a your clients when they're because they will people look at you for ages before they buy don't they I mean for some stuff you buy it quickly but for other things if you make an investment you're like you're watching along and like this person what are they doing and like yeah. you do want to see that completely and you're so right it adds validation in I actually think I'd be a bit maybe concerned is the wrong word but I think I'd think oh I don't know if I've made the right decision if I worked with someone particularly one-to-one and they didn't send yeah. me a contract or if it was rubbish do you know, like if you got the contract and it was really short, because sometimes people are like, how long should it be? People, because people do worry about these kind of things. But if you had a one pager and as you said, if it just spoke about finance, this is when you pay me and this is how I'm looking after your data. What about all of the other things? And like, what about if like mm. I have an idea in the session because she is in the same space as me, but I'm trying to work with her because she's further ahead than me. Is it her idea or my idea? And it's those kind of things that people so are like, true. yeah, I need that to be in my contract. And you're so right what you said earlier about letting it evolve, because I definitely find almost every client I work with helps me to improve my contract and my ways of working because as people cross boundaries, I learn what my boundaries are and I go, oh, we need something in the contract about, you know, how quickly I might respond via WhatsApp. Or I have added in recently about um, if they're a client, don't message me on other social media platforms expecting a reply. They're welcome to message me something, you know, yeah. reply to a story. I'll oh, love that. But like, if you need my help, here are the channels to use. And actually, if you use these other channels, here's what's going to happen around yeah. that. And actually, it's so nice to look at it that way of like, what can I set out that allows both of us to enter into this 
working period in whatever format that might be really intentionally and then also what's going to help both of us to feel safe you know I think you're totally right as a consumer it's nice to see a contract that shows you okay I'm being thought about here because I, th- I wonder do you notice that's another misconception as well people think the contract is all about protecting them whereas actually it's as much if not more about the the client as it is yeah you. and that's another thing that we have we decided I say we it was me that made the decision but in <laughs> the your business, business Lucy in the business when I was writing the contracts of like how to balance them because they're templates and so sometimes people are like well is this going to protect me or not and they are balanced they're balanced in the sense that they support both sides it's not overly aggressive and we've got like within our contracts we sometimes suggest and say if you wanted to do this you could do this so if we, like we never make recommendations but just like if you're looking for this scenario so put mm. a couple of scenarios in because sometimes people want to take a hard line on things like for refunds and things they're like what what do I like do I have to give a refund and it can be quite complicated as to whether they do or not in a certain scenario but it's about setting it up properly in the first place as to whether they will have to because it will depend on what logic and what they've written but and I think it's just a, when you when we're um, running our businesses as you were just saying like having that freedom and just being able to say I'm not going to message you on these platforms I'm not going to do this and that's the best bit about it. that's why it's really legally so empowering because you can make all the choices and you can set it up for success and for a way that feels good for everybody that positions you as the expert and and you're thinking gosh this is just a legal template so when people are saying like what do you do it is give people more confidence it is help people sleep at night it is help people look more professional all in just the way they're presenting themselves with their terms mm. and it's and even with like trademarks and things as well because often people are like when when do I get one Should, do I need one do I not need one but even having one shows that you're not someone who's just dreamt of an idea overnight like you didn't just suddenly go this is this amazing thing because you've got a trademark and they take months to get and people don't normally invest in a trademark unless they're keeping it mm. do you know like you get an idea you try it out you validate it you're like, yeah, this works, or that's just why did I call the course that, or whatever it might be. But you yeah. then like you move on with it, and then people get a trademark, and it just kind of they're really proud of it. I like, I love all of that as well. It's like a, mm. a huge moment because it's people feel like they're really doing business properly as well. Yes, because I think a lot of the time when we're running our own business, we're like, oh, am I winging it? Am I, am I, a, like, am I really a proper business? Like, do I, I don't, do I ask people for annual leave or like all of those things? Like, how do we treat ourselves in our own business? And sometimes having these other bits can really make you feel like. I Actually, I'm doing this properly. This, mm. this is... Let's talk about trademarks because I want to jump around some kind of different, more specific topics that people might have. Questions around that I think you've got such great kind of wisdom on. I really clearly remember the, the day I got the trademark in for On Paper, my stationery shop. And you're you're so right. It's that moment where you go, oh my God, yeah. this feels proper. I remember having a certificate and putting it on my office wall and thinking like, oh, this is so exciting. Can you tell people just a few, I guess, kind of like even key facts about trademarks? Like, is it true? And this is a genuine question from my side. If you're using a phrase and you haven't trademarked it, is there anything to stop someone else trademarking it and then stopping you from using it? Because surely is that one of the big risks people take when they don't trademark things registered and unregistered right so if you've not registered something you do have in this is going to be uk specific but it's you in the uk you have what's known as unregistered rights and so Mm. you do have some rights that you can say i was using it first but once someone's registered it they then have the right to, to use it and so it can be really difficult in this and people often sort of say well they've this has just come out of the blue i didn't know what it was gonna it didn't know it was gonna happen and like we've had people call because i think you'll know and some people listening won't know but we've got the legal template shop we've also got a law firm as well now like mm-hmm. the journey has really uh, <laughs> escalated but we've got a, a law firm and people will call in the law firm and they'll say i've received a cease and desist this person's got a trademark they say i'm infringing on what they're doing but like, I don't believe that I am or I, yeah, we are, but I'm like, I've been trading for such a long time. They then are like facing, like having to rebrand and things or like worrying about whether they're going to need to. And it's just one of those things where you think this could have been really easily resolved first if you'd got one beforehand. Yeah. Um, and of course it is really hard because you can say, well, I don't, didn't know it was going to be big or I didn't know if it was going to be going to be worthwhile protecting it. The, the, the risk of not doing it can be very expensive. Well, it's when you put into context as you have the, cost of a trademark being under 200 pounds versus rebranding which can cost 
a and limitless it, amount of money. And it normally comes at the worst time as well because it normally comes when you're being more visible. So often people think, like, are worried about being visible because they're like, I don't want to be seen, I don't want to be doing anything wrong. And I feel like if I go out of my little group of people who know me, the people who I'm working with, one of my friends or friend of a friend, that's when I'm going to start getting asked for refunds. Or that's when the wheels might come off a little bit because I've not quite protected myself. That's probably correct. But all you need to do is put these things in place so you can open like the floodgates to actually provide the services that you want to to the people that you want to. Mm. And getting those, tra- getting a trademark in place. I always, I had a client in the law firm, and they got a cease and desist. Like she came to me. This is like, ended up being on Christmas Eve, um, and she'd got she got this cease and desist on the twenty third of December. She'd got a January wow. launch, and she called. She's like, I don't know what to do. Can you can we speak? And I was like, when I started out in my business, there were things that I was like non negotiables, and something like working Christmas Eve was like that's never going to happen. But at the same time, I was like yeah okay I'll help you because she really needed help she got a season desist from a huge business which we will all use every day she hadn't she didn't inadvertently tried to trademark an element of their trademark but she would put it in the new launch because she was launching and she put it in the new title of the thing she's doing in January but then her whole team had gone away and I was like you they're saying season desist you cannot launch with that name and she's like but I, but it, the launch is ready. Like everything's done. The graphics are done. The emails are done. Everything's scheduled. Everything's ready. At the end, when she'd redone everything and changed it to a new name, I said to her how much did it cost, and it cost like the best part of fifteen grand because of the people's time and energy that had gone into this launch and that wow. was just wasted and had to be redone. I was just like, that's so it's so annoying that that's like. 15,000 versus 200 pounds like yeah and all the stress for her because basically her and her husband then had to rebrand everything over the Christmas break ready for this January launch it really makes you question like I'm now going through in my head all the names I use in my business and weighing up because I've probably got about like there's eight different brands under Alice Benham Limited and I'm like oh which of those names if someone were to cease and desist me would be most annoying probably most of them okay that's a nudge to do that like I did it with on paper and it's exactly as you were saying you know a little while ago of of thinking about not like could this grow but like I've got an intention for this to grow so I'm going to treat it like that way and I'm going to protect it and I don't want to have to set this business up to then have to rip it all down and change it in future and I'm really glad I did it for that and now I'm thinking oh could definitely be uh doing it in a few other areas this is what like mindset plays into this so much and like I have this with other elements just because I can do the legal things like when we were just starting recording this and the tech was not quite working I was like having a panic attack I was like because tech for me is the big thing like okay. if, when that goes wrong I struggle so I'm definitely just because I'm talking about the legal confidently it doesn't mean that my business is seamless and things but what I try to say to people is imagine if tomorrow you got a cease and desist on something could you just change it and if you can then fine you're not ready to trademark but if because it happens literally people send me them all the time or they're like oh, someone else has got it they're like I've just gone to register and I've done searches and I can see they've got it like what do I do now and mm-hmm. like well they've got it so it's the rule is it's, fir- yeah. it's the first person to register in the UK like that's the rule so that they now have the trademark and there are things you can do but it's quite complicated and that is more expensive to unpick it but yeah and you just think just it's looking forward and thinking what do I where do I want this to end up and because like it's with the whole VAT thing as well like I remember when I was like getting towards the VAT threshold which was lower than it is now and slightly but I kept thinking I don't want to earn that much like I don't want I don't want to hit that because I don't want to have to charge VAT but then I like try to unpick that a little bit more I was like why do I not want to charge VAT like why don't mm-hmm. I just prepare the business properly for hitting there? And I didn't, I, I didn't know this as well. Like, I'm happy to say that I, I didn't, I knew the threshold and I knew it was in 12 months, but I thought it was like every financial year. So I didn't realize that when my accountant was like, just keeping an eye, because I said, can you keep an eye out for me? She's like, just telling you this is coming quite fast now. And I was like, oh no, no, but it'll be like next year. And she was like, what do you mean next mm-hmm. year? She's like, it's a rolling three months cycle yeah of like if you hit it within that period you have to pay and I was like oh we are not ready do you know like and I wasn't ready like I don't know everything about business like when I was thinking about this before I was thinking like I'm a lawyer so I know those areas and I can and I'll stand in my expertise for that but like I did GCSE business studies I have no legal uh, no business qualifications I know you've got like business qualifications and things that you've done you've done accountancy things before haven't you but I think you said I hear you say before that you've done the exams for you yeah I've done accountancy stuff that is you know loads more about accounts than I do and that's the same where a lot of people are when they're when we're trying to do all of these things like it's surprising 
the success that this the both the businesses have had like I'm more shocked than anyone <laughs> often and we were talking about this at the start weren't we like I can't believe that they've been so successful and I think in part it's because I don't try and be like I know everything you don't know things like it's super scary like we never try and make it scary in the marketing there's like lots mm. of our competitors like do a lot of scaremongering and we are we I'm really careful not to do that and if it feels I try and put it from a place of empowerment and like excitement and if you yes. do this properly you can create this incredible life because I've done it and I've helped thousands of other people do this now too like the, yeah. the way that we the businesses that I've worked with and the way that they've like just shot off and the trajectory like we've worked with incredible businesses of cross we've worked with like people who have pet like businesses like dog walking businesses cake making businesses balloon making businesses and coaching life coaching health coaches like so many different people people opening accountancy practices and it's so exciting mm. and I think that's what makes me want to do do this and help people on Christmas Eve because they're doing amazing things that person I still work with them and their business is just absolutely incredible and it's that's like it's the helping people that makes makes it all come to life I think you can talk about it like quite forensically like oh it's where do you put this on your on your website of like oh of the trait of the terms and conditions but it's it's about so much more than that and that so comes across you really do breathe like the fun into the legal side of business I'm even sat here making a list in my head of like oh I want to go and edit these things and do these things because it is it's how you position it that it does give you so much control and legitimacy and autonomy Mm. and like it's it's positive things. I want to talk about refunds. Okay. You've brought that up a few times. Can people say no refunds allowed? That's my big question. Because no. I often... Okay, easy answer. <laughs> they can't... Well, I mean, they do it. They do it all the time. I was going to say, because I always see on websites when people are selling... I've never done it myself, so I'm very glad that you said no. <laughs> but I'll often see people selling a course or a program. And the wording is, and I'm sure you've seen this, no refunds available, so please invest intentionally. Or please think before you buy, because it's a digital thing, blah, 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 I can't give you a refund. Okay, so that changes things slightly. So okay. when you ask, when someone asks you for a refund, we have to think about the who, what, when, where, and how of refunds. So who it is that was purchasing, when they purchased, how they purchased, where they were, because if they purchase online versus um uh, in a store is different there are different rights so it's Mm -hmm. but one thing you can't do is say no refunds Mm -hmm. like for me to give you an example I guess it's a case of if if you were to deliver your services and you you just didn't do them so for example you were ill or something happened in what way can anyone think that they wouldn't be entitled to a refund and you think if you'd written no refunds but then you've not not done it like not delivered it there's no way you wouldn't be entitled to one that's called scamming people yeah (laughs) exactly and so when you put things like no refunds firstly for me it's like red flag they Mm. don't know anything about refunds so what do they what else do they not know about their business especially if you are someone who's been is holding holding themselves out to know about business. And I think this is what really frustrates me because you have, I'm not going to digress actually, I'll finish, I'll finish the point, but we don't want to talk about the fact that people sort of don't cover off the legal side or they're running like a business course and they don't cover off the legal side, which is so important. But mm. I think for refunds, you have to you have to tell someone about their right to a refund. Consumers have protected rights. And I think the, the thing that people, the trap that people fall into is if you are a business, they think if you're selling to another business, you don't have to give someone a refund. That's not not what the law says the law around refunds is that if business to business you don't have to um allow them to have 14 days to change their mind right, and that's what okay. people think so there's the no cooling off period yeah that's what it came from from the old legislation it was that period where you'd be able to change your mind and that obviously online is a different sort of thing and people actually want to have that so then they're like well i work with businesses and consumers so then what do i do and i'm like well think about it from your point of view like what we said before how would it feel for you if you were to purchase something and then you changed your mind just because you're a business because sometimes people are like oh so if I'm purchasing something should I like use my personal card so I can say it's not for my business to get that consumer right but I think it's when people say things like no refunds they're just missing the fact that you can that, that of how it actually works properly so you know when you then said oh about digital courses there are pieces of legislation yeah to support people who are selling digital products and for example big companies like Apple and others the way you download digital music and you pay something obviously once you've downloaded something you have it if you've got access to a course you have it and so if there's instant when it's an instant download you don't have to give someone a refund you've put the correct wording at the point of sale to say that bit be careful this is a a digital download you're getting instant access therefore you're giving up not your right to a refund your right to change your mind in the first 14 days because if in that course that they download it's a load of rubbish like again like if it it doesn't say what you're you're telling them it's going to do if you say I'm going to teach you how to do this and it doesn't teach them that they can ask for a refund of course they can that has that has to be Mm. right doesn't it you can't and sometimes I think people look around at what other people are doing online and they don't remember to use logic of the fact that 
clearly if I purchase something and it's not right or it's not good I'm not allowed to and I think that sometimes people it's it's bad the way it's almost it's like manipulation when they say oh please like act in integrity let's keep our ethics like correct and it that's not correct at all like it's all and it's awful to treat people Mm. like that because it's not and they'll say well you you agreed to that but it wasn't the correct actually they shouldn't have ever been doing that in the first place interesting okay so if someone is gonna get that dreaded request for refund email Mm. and the consumer or does consumer might be the wrong word the user whether it's a business or a consumer feels that what they have purchased is not to their expectation. Yeah. It's maybe not fully accurate. It's not to the level of quality, whatever. And it's a kind of digital thing, course yeah. program, digital product. Should a business owner then just go, okay, default is like yes to the refund? Like, I'm guessing it's like, how do people then navigate almost what to say yes to? Well, this is where it comes back to this part of the, what you put in your terms. You know, when we were saying right. before. So if someone was to ask you for a refund in the examples that you've given before about, I'm going to help you achieve this, or I can't help you achieve this. And you can tell people you can't do it. Like, that's fine as well because people yeah. worry about that they're like but I can't I can't guarantee if you're running Facebook ads I can't guarantee you'll get leads I can't guarantee you'll get this transformation whatever it might be fine that's okay say that you can't mm. or say you don't get any one-to-one in this and then upsell your products like if you're doing a group program that's the thing that people miss off as well they think oh well I'm just putting in like just the legal stuff and no, then actually you could upsell by saying there's no group there's no one-to-one training in this but you will get extras and that's the thing someone might come to you and say oh I want a refund because I didn't actually get any time to ask you questions or I didn't get you one-to-one and it's a case of saying well you mm. they would get you because that's the big thing now is like people can buy courses and they never even see the person that's created the course but it's like did you tell them they get one-to-one did what did you say so it's almost that all of those other pieces then come into play as to whether you'd have to give them a refund or not and that's where you've got to be really commercial as well like if it's somebody saying I haven't used it I pressed the wrong thing like I added that on as an extra and I've actually I actually already own it you can create the business as well like where you then have upsells and you suggest to people and they're like I've just logged back in and I realize I already own this course but I haven't watched it yet and like I think there's something there for people to learn when they're like buy too many courses isn't there like, yeah and so sometimes people will say like we've had it a few times and they go I know you don't give refunds and immediately obviously I'm like well yeah of course mm. I'm giving you a refund because you've purchased the wrong thing that's one of my favorite things about having quite strict policies is I can always yeah. go against them I'm guessing that is actually legally allowed but that's well, in always favor of, in favor of in favor the, of them yeah. yes like that's always my favorite way to go it's like my terms are super tight they protect both of us to an insane level however nine times out of ten if someone like like you said if there's other circumstances like i had someone with my finance files the only person that asked for a refund for it was because they just completely misunderstood what they were and obviously i gave them a bit of a lecture in my email back of like you know you could have watched the five minute video that showed exactly what they were and you could have maybe checked all but whatever like i don't want you having something you don't want so actually i'm fine to give you a refund and i'm going against my policies to do that and that's the thing you can always choose to go against it but having it there protects you i think it's amazing that you just said you had a refund request because i don't think people talk about it enough no and the fact that as you say you can then reflect on it and then often then we're like what can we do to make our marketing better or completely can we do to make this clearer how can i make this better for the person instead of being super negative about it and be like oh no it's it's awful and like i know i hosted a live course like a, just a year and a half ago i had a baby due and my husband was like what are you going to do if the baby comes early i was like i'll give everyone a refund and you know like it wasn't in my terms that i would have to or like i could have i'd set it up in a way that i could have delivered it later or mm. i could have done these things but i just knew that like commercially there was no way i was gonna hang like make everyone like not get a refund if I was not going to deliver at the time I said I was going to deliver yeah so then I was like delivering and talking about two different contexts there but then thinking do not have this baby (laughs) now because I really wanted to do it and there's nothing like trying to set your business up for taking some time away whether that's for maternity or to have a sabbatical or to do fun things in your life to really make you super focused on Mm. things to make sure like can this business actually work without me and I know a lot of people say oh you're not running a proper business if it doesn't work without you but actually we a lot of people probably listening to this are kind of like a one-man band still doing a lot of the things themselves working with freelancers where they can and mostly it is them and just trying to set your business up for success and actually not have you in it it is a really hard thing to do but that's a great example of kind of how you can yeah have those ways of working but then still choose to do things in a way that feels good to you in the moment yeah. and it's funny you say about me getting that refund request because it's actually the first and only I've ever had and it made me absolutely spiral for about four hours <laughs> I remember I was cycling from my flat to uh, a Pilates class mm-hmm. and I saw it ping up as an email and there was just you know the dread the pit of your stomach <gasps> 
that was it. And I was like, I've been waiting. And I always knew the first one would feel the worst. And I'm so, so grateful the first one was, oh, I completely got the wrong thing. So sorry, mm. any chance. Rather than, I hate this, this is awful. You know, it felt kind of the, the, the best version of a refund request I could yeah. ever have. But it, it does feel scary, doesn't it? But almost I do think once you've had it once, and then as you said, you can learn from it. And it sounds like so much of what you're sharing, which I love, is like actually about the messaging and the marketing as well being really accurate like the more open and accurate you can be about what you're selling the more safe and comfortable you're going to feel from a legal perspective because if what people get matches what you told them they're going to get and the terms in the middle kind of confirm the legal side of that like you don't have anything to worry about and having a bit of grace and going actually yeah they're right sometimes you know like you're saying actually yeah I didn't describe that properly I should give this person a refund and update what Mm. I'm doing and I think it's it's fascinating as well when you like you say there like you you were thinking it's going to feel awful and this is one of the things that I learned and almost when I took the leap to go into running my own business it was absolutely terrifying and I knew that people would have opinions on it I knew that my parents wouldn't think it was a very good idea leaving what they thought was a very safe legal job yeah and especially because of the time we were in our lives that like having paid maternity leave all of those things and I just went through like what's the worst case scenario of this maybe I won't make any money but I will work really hard so I do do you know I'm trying to work through the contingencies but in the end I was like I will go and get a job and I was like there's nothing wrong with getting a job that's been my whole life so far I will just go and get another job I'll work in another law firm and I will have given it a go because I was so desperate to give it a go like I really I saw Mm. other people doing it I was like I wonder if I could do this like I wonder if I could have a business too but I was so worried about getting like as you say make getting that refund request failing it not working out what would people think of me and it was almost taking that time to be like well what is the worst case scenario what's my plan b yes like, and that and also that driver which i was saying at the beginning of people saying oh well, you can go back to the firm and then explain like why what you've been doing in, in the time between and i was thinking i don't want to have to tell that story i want to make my own story mm. and i want to make it exciting and i want to do all of these things and i think often with running a business like you were saying like you can make it so fun and like that's one thing for us that i'm constantly like how can we make this more fun like how can we get people behind this what can we do because people typically think of like legal as a boring thing and I made the business pink like that's not my favorite color but I was just like is it not no. you'd never know it I know and I think <laughs> now I was like very worried I worry a lot about it being too like feminine or like a certain way and like this year I've been really really worrying about how we're portrayed but the reason it's pink is because it's different in the marketplace it was interesting it was corporate navy kind of red or black or something like that and I was like what can we do to really stand out and at the time that did really stand out in the online space perhaps it doesn't as much but actually branding the whole business pink very much did and just trying to do things that are fun like we do things on the website like when we have an annual sale in October we were like hid things and we did like little like easter eggs and we're, like sending people to go and find things on the website if yes. you find this you'll get a code and like you hooked me with that oh. I had a good 10 minutes of just and, like, like where jumping around your website yeah. and then you're getting people on the website you're getting people talking about it we've got other things that we're planning and doing to actually make people excited about running their business as well Mm. and like almost as I say we're learning all of these things like we trial things we when we do launches and things I don't really I don't really like the phrase word launch when we bring things to market or we invite people to work with us love that um we try and do it in a way that makes people want to be part of it and mm. to take people along on this journey with us. And I think it can be quite lonely running a business. And purposefully, I try and stay out of a lot of the drama because people send me the drama as well. Like, oh, what do you think about this? And I purposefully don't get involved. I'm not in any big masterminds. I kind of do my own thing. I'm very kind of quiet in that sense. And I think it's very hard then to try and live your whole life on social media, which you feel like you sometimes have to do. And I don't know if you know this, I started out like having my own profile, like a, a fitness profile. That's how the whole Lucy Legal thing started. No way. And I used to share my whole life online. And then like lots of things changed and I got the children and was very, well, you're quite reserved about things because you have RSM. Like, But I think it's that thing where people feel it's, personal and that's great and you go yes I've done my job and then you think oh there's so much you don't know (laughs) yeah and that's really hard isn't it and then sometimes I think as well like people are often everyone is dealing with things behind the scenes Mm -hmm. and like I watch in awe sometimes how my clients navigate things they're having awful things happening in the background like where we're involved like legally and they just show up and I'm like wow you're Mm. incredible well it's funny you say that because that's one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was how do you navigate such stressful situations because I had earlier in the year and because it's a legal situation can't really talk about it that's the fun thing isn't it everything's everything's embargoed I had some legal stuff happen earlier in the year to do with the book and I'll tell you more about it off mic because Lucy 
it was wild. Nothing to do with me, no one's fault, but just genuinely the hardest thing I've ever been through. Yeah. Like hands down, the most anxiety I've ever felt as a business owner, the most fear I felt, the most I felt just, it just consumes you, doesn't it? And I remember at the time, and still now, you know, can't talk about it, but at the time especially, couldn't definitely couldn't say anything and mm-hmm. I had to show up. Business as usual, assume the best, but there's this big thing going on. And I was thinking in the back of my head as you were talking earlier about that client ringing you on Christmas Eve, like, that consumed me and that's happened once in eight years. That's, in a law firm, kind of your every day. Like you are, I'm sure when you open your inbox or answer the phone, kind of just waiting for the next like big situation to land. I guess it must be slightly different if it's not your business specifically. But would you say you as a person are just very good at handling that kind of stress and anxiety or have you had to learn and and find a way to kind of live with that? Because I like, if my life was that legal situation all the time, I couldn't yeah. do it. Sometimes it's really stressful and it's really hard. Mm. And sometimes, often, I question what I'm doing. And you'll probably realize I rarely speak about the law firm. Like I cannot, I cannot believe sometimes like, I own a law firm. Like I don't say That's that That's crazy. Like, I, What's it called? Can you say? Wheel of Wood. Oh, firm. I love that. Yeah, so it was named after like my parents' names. So my, my maiden name is Wheeler. Um, I never changed my name because it's L-A-W on my initials. So I kind of- I mean, I it was keep, meant to be. I had to keep it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got the law firm, we've got clients we work with all the time, but I can barely say anything about it. And so mm. I really respect their privacy. So almost like I don't say anything about it, but we hit a huge milestone last year, like financially. I was just like, this is amazing because I don't want to say we didn't try. I work really, really hard. But I had a baby last year as well. So like, it was almost like juggling all of these things. I set up the law firm and I had the first baby. And it's it's mainly because it's regulatory. You can't give advice yeah. unless you're in a regulated law firm. So that's anytime I'm giving advice to people or doing anything on to one, that's why we have the two businesses. And they're very separate for regulatory reasons. They're, they're totally separate, but it's I work in both of them. And yeah, some of the things that happen to clients, it's crazy. Like some of the deals they get, they're so exciting. Like when people get book deals, I'm, I am their biggest fan as well I think that's like I am so passionate about everybody's business I work with so we've got a membership as well through Lucy Legal and I'm on that journey with people like I want them to succeed I want them to have that exciting life and then yeah it comes with ups and downs I think we've we let go of a client last year because they were just just not the right fit and I never thought I would not like say no to work you know and you start out and you're like oh I never would turn down like yeah that kind of work but they just weren't a nice person and I think it's not it's not talked about enough either and I was like I don't want to work with you like and I don't want you to treat me in this way mm-hmm. and even though the contract was being followed by both parties it, it doesn't really matter what contract says in that yeah. kind of thing you want it's how you feel when you work with people and it's it's that kind of thing when someone does message you on a Friday night am I gonna do I want to deal with their problems sometimes it's because they just didn't listen to what I told them and sometimes I would tell them if you've done this way <laughs> I'm quite straight talking so I'd be like well if you remember I did say that no I didn't say that but you kind Hate of to say I told yeah, you so I didn't say I told you so but and I think that that's it's hard when it's like that but I I love supporting people and I love, I'm on that journey with them and like I am very much heart on your sleeve kind of like mm. if it's you, you know and you're saying like if if it's their business it's different yeah. I fight just as hard as if it was my own business. Because you must feel a lot of that on their behalf. Yeah. So you just learned to, that, that that's just going to be the way your business feels. Yeah, it's exciting. Time. I feel privileged to be on that journey with people as well. And they've given mm. me that opportunity to work, like to fight their corner. And we've, I came back from maternity leave a second time really early because of trying to get a trademark dispute sorted. And it was a huge win. Do you know, like, I can't tell you anything about it, but it was, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like professionally, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. And again, didn't celebrate it, carried on like what we were talking about at the start like you don't you don't do that but it's and that's why I had the two businesses because it's hard it's a lot of work I wanted to be able to still do what I do and I think that's it gives a lot of um credence I guess to to what we do in the in the template shop because people are like well they're just templates how can they be very good well they're they're good because I see what happens on the ground all the time I see people who invest in because a lot of my clients or big hitters and they're investing in big things as well. I see what happens inside those masterminds and in those things that are going wrong. I see a lot of the stuff or they bring things to me and they're sharing things. So I've got a lot of intel from in the marketplace as to what's happening Mm. and can be then like, I know why, what you need to be putting into your contracts to 
to make it work. So yeah, that must be so interesting. I know you'd never do this because you have values and you're a good person. But if you ever were to be able to write a book, I bet you'd have some at, like a tell all all the goss. I bet you're a real source of info. <laughs> we'll drop a name in the sense that I got invited to the Hay House Christmas party because one of my clients is um, going to be a published author with them, and it was incredible. And they were all talking. Like everyone had book deals there, and I was like, oh. when I got when I was walking in, I was like, oh no, I just realised I'm going to be like the only person that didn't have a book deal. Then I checked myself again and thought, I don't want to write a book. That isn't what I want to do. Do you know when you're saying yeah. like, and it's incredible if that's your dream. But I think often in the, especially in the online space, we're chasing after things we don't necessarily want because other people are. And as I'm saying, we hit a massive financial milestone in the law firm and we almost hit it. It was almost six figures, which is why I was like, oh, I could have said I had two businesses over that. And I was like, but why would I be saying that? Because my, it wasn't my goal. My goal was to like keep, try and wind things down whilst I had a baby and I tried to have some maternity leave. Like that was my goal. Yeah. And I think sometimes you've got to think about what is your goal? Are you chasing these income figures because of the people online say you should? Like actually is your goal to enjoy life and mm. to like not to be trying to make more money all the time. And I feel like it's quite a lot sometimes where people are chasing after money and it's not even what they want. I think it's like creating this life that you love. And that's what I love most about business is that you can find your specialism, get really good at it, become the known expert. And then it just opens so many doors of the rest of the other things you can be doing in your life. I love that reminder. I think that's something we all need to hear at every point, don't we? Not to have that kind of shiny object distraction and think, oh no, actually this is what it's about, but actually just take it back to basics and go, right, why do I, why do I work so hard? What is this actually for? And how can I get closer to that? I feel like I could talk to you for hours Lucy well I know I could talk to you for hours because we have in the past <laughs> talked for hours um but conscious of bringing this conversation to a close I would love for you to end with anything it could be multiple things or just one thing that maybe you feel is a particular misconception when it comes to the legal side of running a business like is there a certain fact that you find whenever you share it online everyone's like oh my god I didn't know that or anything that you're like final just little kind of tidbit for people where maybe they wouldn't have considered oh that's something I can or can't do or that's a rule that I hadn't thought about before yeah I think I mean there's loads and <laughs> if you would like to uh, see more of them you can definitely you should definitely follow me but we'll probably do that at the end but no I think one of the things that people often say is like when I'd say about like changing the pricing or people bringing something to market and saying I didn't know you could do that so for example when people put something on sale or like try and discount something mm. there's there is legislation around like when you, how you can discount something and how you can say it is properly on, for sale or not um, and lots of people say oh but I see people change the price all the time and a lot of this comes from having this integrity piece about your around your pricing and having a plan as to making sure that something is a proper price and then you reduce it and um, but a lot of people often I'll say things like you can't put something on sale if it's like if you're launching something you should use something like launch pricing or introductory pricing or introductory price point and often people think like oh yeah I can just launch with a sale and you're not meant to do that because it can't really be a sale if you've never had it at the higher price. Interesting. And is that a lot then just to do with the wording you're using? Yeah. So like sale and discount. So I would like not, I would even try and say like not, intro, like sometimes people say early bird offer and an offer, that word suggests that it was higher before that they're getting a better offer than before so i'd say maybe just go for early bird pricing interesting rather than, yeah. lucy do you have to hold yourself back from just commenting on everyone's instagram <laughs> post being like wrong can't stay do lane. that <laughs> yeah, stay in the lane don't get involved yet all the time. you must see stuff all the time and be like that's legal that's yeah, and people, illegal. It's the best is when people <laughs> send me stuff like I, I do love that although i'm like don't get involved like because you pulled so many different ways as a business owner aren't yeah. we? and like being really careful like i try so hard to bring friends my time like i try not to be on emails i don't really email people back half as much as I should um I feel yeah but that just, gives me comfort but, yeah, that. I, but I time block my day like I've got two young children I have very limited working time I've got clients that need the support firm but I also really passionate about running my business and helping mm. people so actually like keeping really clear onto the focus of what I'm doing but yeah you could easily go down a black hole on, on social media couldn't you and then just comment all the time like no I'm doing this wrong but again that's not quite like yeah perfect. that's not in line with your mission yeah. and even as I hear you say about you know opening sale or discount and I can even feel it within myself it's, it's remembering isn't it okay that's not your badge or wrong you did that maliciously it's just going like oh, okay didn't know that before cool how yeah. can I do it differently yeah. moving forwards and that's what I love about your approach is as you said it doesn't come from a place of you know making people feel so scared that they have to do this stuff actually what I think you do brilliantly and I felt it so much in this conversation is make people feel so excited they want to do this stuff you don't feel pushed to do it you feel pulled to do it which I know is your goal and I have to say 
completely comes through because yeah I know that before I came across you the legal side of business was something that I just felt terrified by so to know that there's people like you out there that say it in words that we can understand give us the tools that we need like it's so needed so I hope you know your work is is needed and please never stop running Lucy Legal because it is definitely needed and I don't want to have to find another shop to send to all my clients <laughs> Um, speaking of your brilliant shop, if people finish listening to this and think, okay, I need a bit of help, I'm looking for a bit of support, I think what you do is really unique because, as you said, you've got the law firm, but actually it's, it's Lucy Legal that's really the best fit for a lot of small business yeah. owners. Tell us about kind of what you've got going on on that side, you know, all the way from free to how people can work with you to kind of help out with the legal side of their businesses. Yeah, so if you go on the website, it's legal.co.uk, you will be able to find free resources. We've got checklists and things on there. So if you are someone who's thinking, I need to start looking at this, grab one of our free resources and that will help you. We've also got a quiz, which is quite good, which is kind of, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say that's fun. It's a quiz, <laughs> everyone loves a quiz, uh, to work out like where the gaps are. So that's really helpful. And a lot of people find that really helpful just to take those next steps. So do that on the website. We've got templates and hopefully they're quite easy to work out which ones you, which one or ones you would need if people are stuck then they can get in touch uh, on social media mm -hmm. I'm at lucy underscore legal but we also have a membership too which is growing and it's amazing we've got almost 100 people in there now and it's full of people who are super passionate about running their business properly but we're also sort of going the next level now so as well as supporting people with like legal queries as they come up and like going through their contracts with them and making sure that's legitimate we've also now got a directory that people are joining so you know when i was saying earlier in the conversation like how how do i know online if someone's one of the good guys I was like I'm gonna put together the good guys so it's, there's a that. directory um, of people who work online who are all of our members so they work with me regularly or well, I support them through the membership sort of to say like these people have done it these people have gone through they've checked the terms and conditions they've there because it's it's hard isn't it and there's lots of smoke and mirrors in the online space and you don't know who to invest in you don't want to get burnt you don't want to buy a course and it be rubbish because you because also from the consumer side you don't want to be asking for a refund and things it's, it's not nice so we've created this space in within the membership and it's yeah it's really good it's really like friendly space as well nice. and it's not and it's about helping people not just to grow a legitimate business but then amplify their voices because we've got quite a platform now of people and so to share like the work that people are doing in a really great way oh that's so good i love that well all of those links will be left in the description in the show notes wherever people are listening your social media is also great i love your Instagram mm -hmm. it's got so many helpful bits on it when I'm like oh I've got a legal question Lucy will have spoken about this let me go and find and so many things like what you just shared around like opening sale all those like oh my gosh no one taught me that I didn't know that kind of ideas so yeah we'll leave all the links below for people to come and check you out and I always encourage the listeners if you've enjoyed this episode don't just come and let me know you know tag us on socials let Lucy know what your takeaway was um yeah this has been so so helpful Lucy as I already said I think what what you do is so needed. So I just appreciate you sharing more in this format. And selfishly, I hope Lucy Legal is your forever business because it is so <laughs> incredibly needed. And um, I'll see you back for some more business. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for having you. me.